will make my path straight. I know, I know, I'm gonna shout and praise. We're talking about integrity. And we'll meet a man who learned that lying can really get under your skin. Let's, Let's go. <laughs> hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. And today, we're talking about integrity. Which is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. Hey, Sebastian, what you doing? Selling some toys? Nope. I'm figuring out what car I want when I'm older. Ooh, I want a red car. There's more to a car than just the color. <laughs> Trust me, I'm ahead of you there. I doubt it. <laughs> Maybe we should put our car knowledge to the test? So, you want to compete with me to see who knows more about cars? Is your fuel pressure regulator busted? Because it sounds like you're stalling. <laughs> oh, it's on. <laughs> Whoa, what is this? We've got to guess what kind of vehicle is in the picture. Piece of cake. Minivan. Looks more like a bus. But it's not yellow, so... I say school bus. Huh? Oh, no way. This one's mine. Uh... Uh, looks a little dirty. Dumb truck. Wait, no! Garbage truck! Yes! For the tiebreaker. Wait, I, I know what this one is. That's, That's a punch buggy! Plug. Was that necessary? <laughs> We're still tied. Well, I think we need to suit up and uh, settle, settle this on, on the track. track. Let's make it. You can make the car from a lot of things. For this project, you'll need a car body, axles, wheels, and of course, tape. Always. And I got this kit I want to use. So the last thing we need is fuel. Fuel? Sure, a car can't run without fuel. But for this project, the fuel will be the air we put into these balloons. 
First, attach the straws to the bottom of your car. Then, slide in your axles. This is what you'll attach your wheels to. Now the wheels? You got it. And if you need to poke holes in the wheels, you'll need a grown-up to do that. That's right. Now attach the balloon to the plastic tube. Make sure it's good and tight so no air will leak. Finally. Let me guess, you attach the balloon to the car. You are correct. And that's it. Now you have a balloon power car. Guess there's just one thing left to do. What's that? Oh yeah. Racers, start your engines! Hey, get your wheels all the way to the back. My fault. Cheater. Whoa, Ooh, that's, that's loud. Really loud. That's like a fire alarm. Three, two, two one. one. Wait, it's still going? Yes! <laughs> I think it's time for a rematch. I mean... Uh, no. It's time for... <laughs> The story before the story. Today, we're in the 12th book of the Bible, 2 Kings. This tells the story of God's people while they were ruled by kings. Here, we also meet a man called Naaman, who's the commander of the armies of a foreign nation, Syria. But Naaman became very sick with a skin disease, and no one could help him. A servant girl from Israel who knew the one true God said that a prophet of God named Elisha could help Naaman. So Naaman made the long journey to Israel and eventually ended up at the home of Elisha. And that's where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Jen. When Naaman contracted a skin disease, he became an outcast, someone people avoided. He was so desperate that he traveled to an enemy nation looking for help. And God used the prophet Elisha to heal Naaman by telling him to dip seven times in the murky Jordan River. I'm well. I'm well. Naaman immediately traveled back to the home of Elisha. I now know there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Now please, accept a gift from me. Naaman offered Elisha money as a way of saying thank you. But Elijah wasn't about to take a reward for something God had done. As surely as the Lord lives, I won't accept anything. So Naaman kept his money and rode off in his chariot, heading back home to Syria. Enter Gehazi. Gehazi was Elijah's servant. When Naaman offered silver, you can imagine how excited Gehazi was. All that money coming into the household, he might have been dreaming about what he could buy. But then Elijah said, no. Wait, what? My master Elisha refused to take Naaman's gift, but why should I miss out? So Gehazi ran after Naaman's chariot. When he saw Gehazi, Naaman stopped the chariot and hopped out, concerned. Is everything okay? Everything is all right. My master sent me. Lie number one. My master said, two young men just came to me, so please give me 75 pounds of silver and two changes of clothes for them. Well, Naaman was so happy to help that he gave Gehazi the clothes and twice the amount of silver he asked for. Sneaky mission accomplished, right? Wrong. Because after stashing the silver and clothes, Gehazi went back to Elijah. Where have you been, Gehazi? I, uh, I didn't go anywhere. Lie number two. And that's when Elijah dropped a truth bomb. Gehazi, God showed me how you chased down Naaman and lied to him. And now you're lying to me as well. Because of that, you will have the same skin disease that Naaman had. And sure enough, instead of getting to enjoy silver and fine clothes, Gehazi himself ended up with leprosy. The end. Well, that story sure took a turn. <laughs> no kidding. Gehazi started with one lie. And then he had to tell more lies to cover up the first lie. Telling the truth can be hard sometimes, but it's still easier than dealing with the problems that lying creates. So, 
What's our part in the story? Well, integrity is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. That means telling the truth, the whole truth, even when it's hard. Like when your mom asked you if you brushed your teeth. Or when you have to admit to your teacher you didn't do your homework. Or when it would be so easy to stretch the truth just to get someone to like you. If you don't tell the truth, you might get by for a short while. But eventually, the person you lied to will discover the truth. And they won't want to trust you anymore. Jesus is a perfect example of living truthfully in everything he said and did. He always spoke the truth, even when it was hard. And he always did it in a loving way. With God's help, we can follow Jesus, choosing to be truthful in all we say and do. I think you got it. Peace! So here's the thing. When you're not truthful, you lose trust. Just like Gehazi. His story got pretty out of control. You think my balloon car will get out of control if I use this? Whoa. <laughs> Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. Oh, I kind of forgot to attach my car. Well, flying cars shouldn't be invented yet. <laughs>